What's up guys? Welcome to Yai's Garage. And uh, today's video will be a little different. So I wanted to make this video for a while, but I just haven't gotten a chance. So uh, now I'm going to just make it because I think it will be helpful for all you VQ owners. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over five common problems that you should look out for when you are going to buy a G37 or a 370Z. So uh, let's get right into it. So the first common problem and probably one of the biggest ones that we want to look out for uh, is the oil gallery gasket. So this issue is most prominent in the older versions of the VQ. So from about 2008 to 2013, G37s and 370Zs have this common issue. So right behind the timing cover and around the timing chain in the engine sit two oil gallery gaskets uh, one is an upper and the other one is lower and what these oil galleries do is help oil flow through one part of the engine to the other and uh, this essentially helps lubricate bearings in the engine so uh, Nissan did a very poor job in creating these in the older models they use a very cheap material which tend to fail and when these parts fail the um, car will lose, lose a lot of oil pressure, which is detrimental to your engine. Uh, oftentimes your car will go into limp mode when this happens, but sometimes it doesn't. So when you lose oil pressure, your engine goes kaboom. So we definitely do not want this. So when you do go to look for older versions of the G37 370Zs, you really want to make sure that the previous owner did a good job maintaining the car. Uh, doing timely oil changes as well as uh, you know just not abusing the car as you know these VQ engines uh, tend to love burning oil and this is a major issue if you uh, want your car and the engine to uh, you know have a long life so um, it's very important to make sure you get a clean car or you can just go ahead and get uh, the newer version so 2013 plus G37s uh, Nissan fix this issue as well as the 2013 plus 370Zs so. so the second most common issue in the G37 370Zs and this is uh, pertaining to the six-speed manual transmission cars is the concentric slave cylinder going bad um, which also stands for CSC so when the uh, concentric slave cylinder fails uh, the first symptom that you will see is when you uh, press the clutch all the way to the floor instead of it coming back up it will just stay to the floor this issue is uh, pretty much inevitable in uh, all G37s and 370Zs does it not matter what year it is uh, I actually ran into this issue as soon as I bought my car uh, the day I went to get it brought it back home from uh, Pennsylvania the clutch uh, the slave cylinder went out um, I could not go into any gears when this happens uh, you will not be able to go into gear you will pretty much get stuck um, right now it's working just fine but when it, this issue occurred to me you could not go into gear whatsoever because the clutch pedal would be stuck to the floor uh, I will go ahead and put a video or a picture uh, in the video right now so you can see what it looks like Another way to tell that your uh, uh, the concentric slave cylinder has gone bad is if you open this cover right here, you will see your clutch fluid. And uh, when your slave cylinder goes bad, you will see that uh, the, your clutch fluid is completely empty. You have minimum and maximum. You want your fluid to be topped off at all times. So when your slave cylinder goes bad, your clutch fluid will leak and uh, it will leak into your bell housing in the transmission, which I will discuss now. So Nissan did a horrible design with the slave cylinder. They actually housed the slave cylinder inside the transmission. So in order to replace the slave cylinder, which is going to go bad no matter what, you have to drop the transmission. And when your uh, slave cylinder does go bad, like I mentioned earlier, the clutch fluid will leak and it will leak into your 
bell housing and a new transmission which will uh, ruin your clutch as well as, as your flywheel so uh, when you drop your transmission you might as well replace your clutch and your flywheel uh, that's exactly what I did uh, when I had to replace my slave cylinder I went ahead and bought the Z-Speed uh, clutch, uh, clutch Master Alteration Kit also known as the Z-Speed C-Mac uh, this comes with a heavy duty clutch uh, master as well as a slave cylinder uh, which gets moved outside the transmission so when you have to replace it in the future it's much easier and you don't have to drop the transmission again uh, i will link that in the description below and also pop up a picture right here so you know what it looks like i highly recommend it uh, i've had it since i got my car it's been over a year and it works amazing um so just know that when you get a car, um, especially around, you know, it's tough to predict. My car was at 75,000 miles and it went. Uh, sometimes it goes at 40,000. It's really hard to predict. Some people get lucky and they don't have to change it. But pretty much from all the VQ and G37 and 370Z owners I know that have the six speed had to get this replaced. So just know when you are buying this car that this is a an expense that will show up. And just to give you a price breakdown, um, of course you can get this done for cheaper, but typically labor costs about $500 to $600. Some shops even charge up to $800. Uh, and you will have to buy the Z-Speed C-Mac, which costs about $500. And then if you do the full kit the way I did, which came with the clutch and the C-Mac from Z-Speed, which was about $1,500. So I spent roughly a little over $2,000 to get this replaced. So. It's a major expense uh just know when you are going to go look out for this car that is most likely an expense that you will have to spare when you buy it uh problem number three the most common issue with the g37s and 370z's is the rear differential bushing leaking so that right there is the rear differential bushing which holds the differential in place and um it holds it from shaking too much so when this leaks the differential will shake a lot and you will get aggressive wheel hop when you uh, floor the car so luckily um, I made a video on this uh, which I'll link above there is an easy fix for this where you take uh, epoxy and fill it up that way when it hardens uh, you, you won't get that aggressive wheel hop I did this fix a few months ago and uh, I've been running it since and it hasn't got, caused me any issues. So that's good news. If you don't go that cheaper route, you're going to have to buy new bushings and replacing that is a bitch. So, um, you know, you're probably gonna, if you can do it yourself, that's really good, but uh, it's definitely a tough job. And if you take it to a shop to do it, they will charge a lot. So. Um, fortunately this is a common issue in these cars and a lot of people do like to push these cars like myself and it's very important to get that fixed because if you don't you will just wheel hop aggressively and it will just cut power so it's definitely not fun. So the fourth most common issue that I want to discuss is the steering lockout module. So uh, the symptoms for this is uh, when you hop in your car and you press your brake and try turning your car on, the car does not start and your steering wheel will get locked. Uh, when your steering wheel gets locked, the car will not start and the car is just programmed that way. So there's a few ways to go about this issue. Um, one, and this is typical to any car, not just uh, Zs and 370Zs. Typically you can yank the wheel back and forth that way the steering wheel become, uh, becomes unlocked, that way the car starts. But this is a common issue in this car and the reason this occurs is because if you follow the steering column, so if you follow the steering column down and go right under here, I don't know if you will be able to see, but there is, you will see a part which is called the ESCL, which stands for the Electronic Steering uh, Control Lock Module. I will put up an image up here so you know what it looks like. So this uh, control module will, tends to go bad in these cars. 
So there's a few ways to go about this. Uh, there's a fuse that you can unplug, uh, which will temporarily help um, solve this issue, but uh, it is not recommended. Uh, the other thing you can do, let's say you're stranded on the road, you can take your cell phone or something to just bang the ESCL a little bit. That can help you start the car. However, the best way to solve this issue altogether is to completely replace that module. Last but not least, um, this isn't a common problem per se. It's just something that you should note uh, when purchasing uh, these cars is that the VQs love uh, consuming oil. So you really want to be on top of doing all your oil changes on time. Um, you know, if you are pushing your car, if you have the car modified with intakes, exhaust, uh, tune, you definitely want to do your oil changes faster than you normally would on a regular car, only because these cars tend to burn a lot of oil. Uh, now, this isn't a very specific problem, it's just the nature of these cars. So I wouldn't necessarily say this is a common problem, but I just wanted to throw that in there. Overall, uh, I do want to say uh, th I, this video wasn't made to scare you guys. Uh, the G37 and 370Zs are actually uh, phenomenal cars and they are very reliable. There's just some common issues that tend to occur very often because of uh, you know some manufacturing issues that once you take care of, overall these cars are very easy to maintain. I push my car, I just do my oil changes regularly and you know I drive with, drive the car hard, make videos on it, and it has not given me any issues since. So uh, I definitely do not want to scare you guys. These cars are excellent. I recommend anyone getting them. They are not hard to maintain, unlike your BMWs or German cars, no shots intended. But um, I hope this video was helpful and uh, you can, uh, now this will be a little easier for when you go out to go look for one of these cars, you know, a few things to look for. So. Um, again, if you guys enjoyed, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, I'm almost to 200 subs, let's get us back up there, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.